Thank you. Morning, all. All right, so again, this is licorice. Okay, okay, okay. All right. There you go. Down you go. All right. Kicks his feet at me, which is the equivalent of a rabbit giving you the finger. All right, so um, just the one game again tonight. Uh, the Dallas Stars at home against Vegas. Uh, and this is this is kind of the season for Dallas, not wanting to be over dramatic. But, I mean, if, if Vegas goes up three games to nothing, I don't see Dallas winning four in a row, including two in Vegas. So for, for the Dallas Stars, they need to figure out Hill. They need to get to him early and often. The one thing we're not seeing in this round that we saw in the last round was teams were scoring often, and we were seeing a lot of lopsided games. Now we're back to tight, low-scoring games. Uh, so for Vegas, uh, Aiden Hill, 930 save percentage, has been very good. And Jack Eichel. Remember before the playoffs, there was a lot of talk about how Eichel, you know, wasn't really a star, and there were just discussions during the season about how Eichel wasn't really the guy, and Buffalo clearly wins the trade. And I'm not saying Buffalo doesn't do very well in the Eichel trade, but... With six goals, nine assists for 15 points, Eichel's done well for himself. He really has. On the Dallas side, Ottinger needs to steal a game. He has a 901 save percentage in the playoffs, which is okay. Um, honestly, Ottinger can be a big game goaltender, but during the season, he had some downbeats as well. And so we'll see whether or not he can, you know, be a wall against Vegas, much like Bobrovsky's been throughout the series against Carolina. Uh, Tyler Sagan, five goals, four assists, nine points. They could use a big game from Sagan, just throwing his name up there. Robertson's had goals in the first two games of the series, but he, he needs support. He could use a goal from Sagan. We'll see how it turns out. So let me know in the comment section below who you believe will win this game. So news of the day, we're going to talk first about Carolina and their struggles in the conference final because it really is noteworthy. So they have three goals in three games against Florida. They've allowed six. Bobrovsky has a 978 save percentage in the series. Y yeah, uh, but the last time they were in the conference final in 2019, they only scored five times in four games against the Boston Bruins. They allowed 17 though. So Tuka Rask put up a 956 save percentage. But that was overshadowed by the fact that Boston had 17 goals in those four games. Um, against the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2009, they had nine goals. So the goal scoring was was better there, but still a little bit over two per game. Uh, they allowed 20. And Marc-Andre Fleury had a 924 save percentage as Pittsburgh was on their way to winning the Stanley Cup. So of the teams that have swept Carolina, one of the two ended up winning the Stanley Cup. Will there be a third in Florida tomorrow? We shall see. But for Carolina, uh, the goal scoring, which I've talked about at points this year, uh, has, has turned on them again. But Florida, a team that frustrated me most of this season, uh, playing in the playoffs like I, I kind of knew they could, but they really didn't through most of the regular season. So we'll see whether or not that continues. I keep seeing people saying, well, it's, it's not going to continue in the next round. Well, they're going to be done now. Well, clearly, yeah, every round people say Florida's going to be out and it's not happening. So we'll see if they reach the final, if they're out again. Um, or if they prove people wrong again. So just kind of a fun little note from last night. Uh, Bruce Boudreau was on Raw. What's interesting with this, of course, is that Bruce Boudreau and Kevin Owens have a friendship. And so I, for him to be at Raw, I think, was really funny. Uh, for anybody wondering, there's been apparently no discussions from the Washington side about Bruce Boudreau with the uh, opening at the head coaching position. So Boudreau at this point is really and truly just a free agent out there living his best life, showing up on the NHL network. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fun. And if you haven't seen the clip, it's it's all over social media. But it, it's funny. It's entertaining. He gets it. And uh, there, there you go. Way to go, Bruce. Bruce, there it is. Um, from last night's game, of course, if you're a Florida fan, the one concern might be Sasha Barkov getting hurt. Uh, Barkov is one of the best two-way forwards in the National Hockey League. Defensively, he's elite. And in these playoffs... He has been fantastic defensively. Uh, so understanding that that him being out is going to potentially hurt the chances for Florida going forward. Uh, that being said, uh, he's downplaying the injury, uh, saying basically, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. It's nothing major. And so, again, because it's the playoffs, this is when you get cagey about injuries. And so we'll see how, how things go. Uh, for Florida from here and whether or not Barkov's back in the lineup tomorrow. But as they showed last night, yeah, Florida absolutely uh, absorbed that loss and you wouldn't have even known. If you weren't paying attention to the line combinations, 
uh, you might not have noticed. Uh, so Vancouver news of sorts. Uh, Vitaly Kravtsov is signed in the KHL. Uh, the Canucks can retain his rights. I'm saying can because they have to give him a qualifying offer in order to retain his rights. Uh, <clears throat> they are the only team that's over the salary cap next year, so Kravtsov signing elsewhere kind of helps them, I guess. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me with the Canucks, of course, is they are the only team in the National Hockey League that, according to Cap Friendly, are over next year's cap. Yeah, they're already over next season's salary cap, so that's that's not fantastic if you're if you're a fan of the Canucks. And again, this is a team looking to get to the playoffs next year. Circling back to Kravtsov, though, he had a good start with Vancouver in his time after coming over from the Rangers. But yeah, he had faded to pretty much being invisible by the end of that run. The same argument Ranger fans would have had. But, I mean, it's not like they, they lost anything in that trade that they were going to keep. So, yeah, uh, Kravtsov, it, it's not a big deal that he ends up signing in the KHL. Uh, so the Flames will be naming Craig Conroy as their next GM, uh, the worst kept secret in sports right now. Uh, that announcement will be at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, at the very least, that's when TSN's carrying it. I assume Sportsnet's carrying it at the same time as well. And so Craig Conroy officially inherits a team that is seen as an underachiever with some tweaks. They could be right back in the playoffs. They could be in contention, but it's a matter of what Conroy does this summer. Um, and then, you know, filling out the rest of the organization, what they're going to do about the coaching position. There's a lot of decisions yet to be made in Calgary. Um, of course, not on the board is that Kyle Dubas released a statement yesterday uh, regarding the, the dismissal uh, for him from the Leafs and, and talked a lot about his time in Toronto and everything. And just, just in general, the whole situation is going to be fascinating to see how, how this goes from here. Um, because for Toronto now, they're going to have to find a GM. The interesting thing to me is, and I understand people talking about, oh, you know, Dubas didn't, they didn't win a cup. They didn't win a cup. Right. But if they're looking for an experienced general manager, especially if they're looking for a former NHL GM, out there there's not a lot of guys out there that you can look at and say have a better resume there are some who may have a similar resume but that's the tricky part right as soon as they said they were looking for somebody with with bite and with experience uh it limits the field uh i agree with the with calgary going out and getting craig conroy i am hoping that toronto kind of does the same thing and promotes from within uh once this process is done but of course calgary started the process much earlier and here we are so, let me know your winner for tonight's game as stated. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on any of these news items. Uh, Canuck fans, are you upset? Kravtsov is gone. Again, I, I don't think there will be very many that are. But let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. And Canes fans, uh, we'll see how the team does tomorrow, right? Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.